All right, so here we are. Oh, Rodenstein's garage, kind of dark in here. We notched that side of the frame out, put a piece of four inch channel in there so that the throw arm on the clutch would clear it. Put the motor back in, built some mounts. Those are riggers right there for them pads to sit on. So I got a insulated motor mounts and dropped it all in, and that piece of the bell housing was hitting on the frame on this other side so we took an inch and a half out of that pulled the motor back out put a piece of channel in that side da 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 so tomorrow this motor is going back in this car and it ain't coming back out again as long as I live anyway I hope that would be the end of that so tomorrow night this thing should be running and I will get it running, and I will take a brief video, but I will not do a cold start, because I don't do cold starts. It'll be all warmed up nice, so I just bump the starter and she starts for any if it gets on video. But anyway, that's what I've been doing. And follow up to that old heater. Thing works like a charm. Takes forever to heat the garage with it, though. Probably wouldn't if the garage was a little tighter. Only half insulated, but uh, what else was I going to say about that heater? There was somebody oh the filter deal. Somebody asked me how long you get before you got to change that filter. I had to take it apart and I flushed it out in the solvent tank, put it back in after about 110, 120 gallons, and some of that was some real dirty oil. So, but anyway, here's what we're up to here. Geez, I want to get this thing running. I gotta put a rear main seal in, it's leaking. So after you narrow up your 96 Chevy extend uh, Chevy S10 frame, you gotta notch it out so everything else fits in between them, but it's not that big a deal with a plasma cutter and a MIG welder. Alright, thanks.